This is Tucker with Tuck's Rods. I was just going to do a short little video on a uh, front steer subframe on a 48 to 55, early 55 Chevy pickup in case anybody's interested in doing one of those. Uh, I just got this little pickup out of the shop here about a week ago. And the, the subframe that I ended up using, the springs were a little bit weak on it. So I ordered some new ones and I'm going to put them on in the shop. So I thought I would go ahead and point out how this I put the subframe in in case anybody out there is kind of wondering on on doing one of these little trucks but uh, I've used I've done several with the uh, front steer subframes and this is the first one I've done with the rear so I wasn't sure exactly uh, how it was going to end up but it is a little low in the front but I believe the springs that were in the subframe were a little weak so I'm gonna they they actually showed up from the outfit that I ordered them from here today so I'm gonna go ahead and pull her in the shop and get the springs put in it to get the front end to set up a little bit more but uh, I just thought I'd kind of show people in case they're wanting to do a subframe and they're fairly cheap to get and common still and uh, they make the little trucks ride and drive pretty good so I'll uh, go ahead and get her in the shop and uh, pull the front end apart and kind of show everybody what I have going on there all right, we got the old 3100 moved back into the shop here. And we're getting ready to get her jacked up, pull the springs out so we can do the spring upgrade on it. And then we'll take a look at it and kind of show what the subframe situation looks like in case anybody out there is thinking about doing one of these. All right, so we got the springs installed on it. So I think we'll just take a quick look here at how the subframe went in on this one. Just in case there's anybody out there that hasn't hasn't built one of these trucks and is thinking about maybe doing one of these conversions. So, like I said before, this one's a earlier front steer subframe, which is found on uh, 67 to 69 Camaros and Firebirds. And it's also the same one that's used in uh, the 68 to 74 Novas, Buick, Apollos, Pontiac Phoenix, I believe and i think there might even be an oldsmobile that had something that was even on the same subframe so there's quite a few of them out there and uh, this is the first one that i've done with that particular subframe which the downfall is is most of them have drum brakes so you're gonna have to either spend the money for the disc brake conversion or else just run the drums and you know, it's just kind of a preference whether or not you like the front steer or rear steer. I've all the other trucks like I've done done on on the subframe here has been uh, front steer ones, which 90% of the time, actually I've never seen one with drum brakes, but I'm sure they might have made some of them. Okay, so what I usually do, which works for me, is uh, by using the subframe, you can you can leave all the stock body mounts and bed mounts when you try to slam these a little ways so I come in right past the original uh, body mount here and just cut the frame off and then these subframes you know have a rail that goes back for about two and a half feet which will lay directly underneath the uh, pickup frame the original frame now the frames on these trucks are tapered you know they're narrower at the front and they taper as they get to, towards the rear, you know, they get wider. But the subframe will pretty much from this point to the end of the subframe will allow the frame to lie, you know, pretty much directly on top of this rail, which actually, you know, if you're a beginner in doing this kind of stuff, it makes it real easy to keep the geometry, you know, correct. You know, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, transmission, mount, pitch, or anything like that. I mean, you know, you can still use the... Uh, transmission mount that's in the subframe so once you once you cut that off and you get this subframe slid back directly underneath here which the only thing you're really going to have to do after you remove all the you know the original front end of the truck is you will have to cut a relief in the uh this this here is like a little like a rock plate to keep rocks and stuff from hitting the battery on these trucks when they were originally built because the the battery will be you know directly behind it on, you lift up a little panel on the floor and there's your battery a lot of guys won't leave the battery there so you can just remove that if you'd like 
Um, the next thing that you're going to have to do is there'll be a running board bracket. I don't know if you can see it or not. This this is coming down about right here. You'll have to cut about halfway up on it, a little relief to allow this subframe to slide past if you're not wanting to narrow this rail up or even some guys will probably disregard it completely. Uh, or you could cut it back in here, taper it down because you've got enough material here to tie your subframe onto the frame. You could actually just, uh, you know, eliminate part of it. But uh, by leaving it all, you can still run the original transmission cross member and uh, all of that. So I always just kind of like to leave them on there and it, you know, helps stiffen the frame up anyways. So once you get that slid in, you know, it's pretty straightforward. A guy, you know, if you're doing it at first and you don't know if you got the, the location for the wheel and the fender, you know, exactly how you want it, you could always just take and, you know, clamp it and load it down with the, the engine weight and uh, mock it up with the fender and kind of see if it's kind of what you're looking for or not. Or you could bolt it even four, you know, two bolts on each side. You could directly drill through the subframe and uh, the original frame of the truck and actually literally bolt the subframe in to to get it where you want it and then you could even weld it at that point which uh would would hold it in place also so it's real simple uh especially if you're kind of beginning at this stuff it's a it's a good way to start out and, and uh, get your hands dirty doing this stuff what i usually do or what i did on this on this one is uh for the front bumper brackets um as you can see here uh this horn right here is uh, where the original bumper, you know, it would be extended on out, and that's what your bumper would mount to if it was still in the Nova that the subframe came from. But, uh, like for instance, on this, I just came in right in here and uh, put in like a quarter inch bumper bracket, which tied into this front substructure, and then just did a little gusset on it. And it worked out pretty nice as far as making the uh, a bumper bracket for it so that takes care of that and then as we swoop on in here towards the middle uh, we can see what I did was I used most of the original radiator core support which is this part right here and I just chopped off the bottom probably I'd say four inches and uh, built my own bottom for it which you know then I was able to come into this subframe area and just build these two little mounting brackets and then uh, use some baler belting you know as a kind of a body spacer to go between the uh, core support and the uh, and the frame here which that secures the front end actually pretty good because originally these trucks the core support came down to just one mounting spot right here in the middle which kind of allowed quite a bit of flex on the front end so you had some crossbars on the top side above the uh, or you know on the top side of the engine compartment that tied into the firewall to kind of help support the front end but by spreading this out wide you don't need those you can eliminate them and it gives you a lot more uh, clearance as far as when you're working on the motor and stuff so I'll try to get in here and kind of show a little bit better how the subframe lays towards the back here of the frame in case anybody's wondering about that Can't get a better idea i go ahead and uh, leave the battery in the floor which might not be what anybody else likes to do because it is a pain to change out if you have carpet in the truck you know if you need to do any kind of uh, battery swaps but so so here's where the subframe ends up it, with that tapered frame it pretty much starts uh right here at the so here's this is how i said the subframe lays right directly under the original frame so i come in and uh you know you can put a spot uh, it's just a kind of a spot well most of your support's not going to be on this rail along here once you get that all boxed in towards the front so just to kind of hold it in place i go ahead and cut a relief i don't know if you can see that right here or not um it's uh I cut kind of a little bit of a relief right here on each end. That way, uh, if when I take the the transmission cross member out, you don't have to go through the, uh, you know, it just clears real easy on the original frame of the truck. It's not even there. 
So that's kind of an idea of how that subframe sets in these trucks. And what I do a lot of times, if you're using the uh, early style, like if you have a complete donor vehicle, like a, you know, a Nova or anything like that, you can use the rear end if you're, you know, not wanting a very, I mean, you know, it's just going to be a 10 bolt GM rear end, so it's not going to hold up too good if you have a lot of horsepower. But if uh, your donor vehicle had the rear end and you're just wanting, you're starting out on a, you know, pretty thin budget, you just want to get it going for you can drive it. You can actually utilize the springs, the rear end, and and uh, everything. And that's kind of what I did on this one. So we can kind of go back here and see that. Uh, What I've done here, I even used the spring pockets when I removed it from the uh, from the donor vehicle, and uh, just go ahead and saddle it up directly under the frame here. In the past, on some of them that I wanted to set a little lower and did a little relief, uh, boxed the back of the frame over the rear end and uh, C notched it. I've actually recessed these pockets to where. Uh, the bottom of them is just right here flush with the frame. You can move them on up in there. The only disadvantage to that is you're going to have to relocate your running board bracket, your last one. You're going to have to move it forwards uh, to clear the to clear the you know the the spring hanger. So, but if you are deciding to go that route, um, then you can always come in here and put like an eighth inch boxing plate here in C notch and probably get about an inch and a half safely. Uh, of rear end travel here, but then the only other interference you're going to have is the middle of the pumpkin of the rear end. You're going to have to cut either a small relief for it to go up through the bed, or you can uh, go ahead and just build like a little box over the rear end, you know, and uh, you'll, you'll, it'll be noticeable from, from inside the bed. It's the only bad point of that. Okay, so now we'll try to make our way back here to the to the rear end of the truck. And if you do use the original Nova Springs or Camaro Springs, um, it's pretty easy to mount them to the rear here with some uh, home-built shackles. All you have to do, because the spring, if you hook it onto the front of the frame right there, it, it it naturally comes back to where it pretty much lines up directly with the frame here. So you have to trim in about an inch. I don't know, that's kind of hard to show here. Cut in a little, uh, bring it in about an inch here, and then build you a boxing plate, which uh, that goes right back, you know, in the, in the inside of the frame right here. And then you can get you a piece of tubing that has the same inside diameter as the springs so then buy you all four new bushings install those bushings and then uh, you can just directly bolt the uh, shackles just right directly to the back of the frame right there which works out pretty good so that's pretty much it's pretty pretty basic pretty easy and it's relatively a cheap way to do one of these you're not wanting to spend a whole lot of money and, and uh, you know there's if you find a donor for the right price so I guess we can kind of take a look at some other stuff if you're kind of wanting to build one of these it's it's uh, on a fairly low budget uh, the, the nice thing about doing this if you decide later on that you want to you know upgrade rear ends or upgrade uh, power plants it doesn't take a whole lot because uh, you're already set up with uh, you know Chevrolet V8 mounts. So say you wanted to put an LS in, they make all aftermarket stuff that would that would bolt an LS you know directly into to one of these trucks. Uh, another thing that's nice by using that original core support and the location, uh, you can buy one of them $130 eBay radiators that's a direct bolt in on one of these. And uh, right down here, you can kind of see that's, uh, well, I don't know if I have my light that's going to show it, show it very well here, but it's, uh, 
you can kind of see right here where we came together with that boxing plate which was uh, tying the subframe to the original frame but uh, those the aftermarket radiators like I said will bolt directly right in here so the only modifications that you really have to do to the truck is uh, you have to cut the inner fenders to clear the subframe and basically cut the bottom of the core support off and then the, the cuts you're going to have to do to the bottom of the running board brackets but as far as to the cab of the truck uh, the only other thing yeah you don't have to cut any of the tunnel out so the floor you know the stock floor is intact still you will have to pull out that little middle unboldable uh, tunnel piece it's pretty flat on the trucks originally and you will have to put in you know like a small a small tunnel that uh, will actually kind of just barely clear the the uh, transmission because it will kind of bulge up right here but you don't actually have to cut the floor of the truck at all so that's kind of a nice thing about it and the only other the only other thing uh, if it's this nice like I said along with not only the front being able to upgrade the motor and the rear if you wanted to put like a you know 8.8 .8 Ford rear end like out of the Explorers which are usually positive tracks and they're really relatively cheap and they're they're pretty durable you could just uh, add one of those pretty easy it'd be about the right track as the subframe and you could also you know if you you wanted you could just buy cow tracks for like a Camaro or a Nova and they'd already be set up to bolt in so you could always kind of do upgrades along the way and uh, you know as you know like I said as your budget budget worked with you you know you could start out cheap get the platform pretty well built drive it around for a while as you gradually built up to repowering it later you wouldn't have to change you know a whole lot of structure things on it on this truck like I said it was I built it awful cheap just for a like a beater to go back and forth to the they were basically like a daily driver so I wasn't too concerned about power and uh, anything fancy and I kind of like the old school look so I just left the original column original speedometer and uh, basically all I'm using out of the, in, the original instruments is the fuel gauge and then I just put a set of aftermarket uh, you know three pack gauges in the past I've used a lot of the the newer style electronic gauges with the programmable speedometer and that works out really really slick on these um, on this one I did oh, a buddy of mine uh, with uh, average Joe's upholstery you know did me some basic uh, old-school looking door panels and a nice looking diamond pleat seat which you know kind of gives it that old-school look and uh, the reason I, I ran the stock the uh, stock gauges and the speedometer in this one's because everything was going to be right since the uh, motor transmission and rear end was all out of the same vehicle so I didn't have to bother with re-gearing the transmission gear or anything like that because it's just a 307 that uh, had had a bad timing chain and gear the fiber gear had went bad the people had put a different timing chain and gear in it but the valves were bent in it so I pulled it apart and seen it had I was I was gonna get rid of it everybody was razzing me for using a 307 but uh, shoot when I pulled the heads off of it it had like zero cylinder wear so I went ahead and just put some rings and bearings in it and uh, took a set of 305 heads because it had flat top pistons in it which I thought was kinda odd but that might be the way uh, the 307's were so I took and uh, put some 305 heads with a small combustion chamber on them on it and then like a little 350 horse 327 cam just to kind of see how it would run I wasn't sure I've never ran one before but actually it's not as you know, I don't think I would actually throw one away I'm kind of impressed with it and I think it's gonna pull down some pretty good mileage but that's kind of the way this little truck is it's nothing nothing fancy real basic and uh, a guy could put one of these together really really reasonably if you come across the, the subframe and uh, or even a whole complete car that somebody's parting out because um, there's like I said you know parts is, is cheap as far as the front end parts ball joints bushings 
you can get all that stuff at your local parts stores, usually on shelf. I mean, it's, they don't even have to order that stuff, and it's real cheap to, to go through on these. So I guess we'll get her back down on the ground and see how she's going to set with the springs. Hopefully it's, it's not the same. We can get a little lift out of it. And uh, I have a bad habit of liking to spin the tire, so we might take her out on the road and see if we can get the little 307 to, to roll a little smoke. All right, now we got the 3100 back on the ground here. And as we can tell, it did give us about two to two and a half inches of clearance on the front wheels here. So it ought to increase the drivability of it tremendously. It doesn't quite have that as cool a look to it, in my opinion, but it's, it ought to drive out really good as a daily driver. So, and I'm hoping that this video did some help for people just trying to decide that the quality of it's going to be really probably pretty bad considering uh, it's hard to take a video of something that's already done. And I wasn't doing videos when, when I built this truck, so... Probably in the next four to five months, I'll build another one of these pickups and I'll do a step-by-step -step along the way so people can get a real clear picture of, of kind of how, you know, an easy way of doing it. Um, I'm going to try to sweet talk the old lady into going out and filming a video. We're going to try to get this huge cubic inch 307 to spin a wheel. The wind's blowing about 35 to 40 mile an hour today, so if, if we can get her out there without her blowing away, we'll, we'll see what she can do. And uh, I also want to remind everybody for... You know, if you have, you're working on this stuff, like this stuff, but, you know, your neighbors or a lot of people give you a hard time and think all this stuff should be crushed, just need to remind them that uh, hot rodders are America's first true recyclers.